while after a while just going to different properties, seeing my uncle manage his tenants, um, and seeing that his property grew twenty thousand dollars in a year, I was like, damn, that's a lot of money. But me knowing that I want to hold on to my properties, the appreciation doesn't really matter because I'm not looking to refinance. I'm not looking to take equity out to buy another property. I'm not looking to continuously maintain debt. So the stock market was like a debt free way for me. Um, and so people need to really weigh out those options and know their risk. And that's a whole nother conversation. But going to see multiple properties with my uncle as he was looking for his third and eventually did get his third. Um, I started going out to see properties on my own um, just as a way to stop renting. And, you know, I was able to look in that $155,000 price range uh, because that was going to equate to how much I was paying the rent, which was like $945. That's dope. That's dope. So let's talk about the process. So you're saying that you went to speak to your uncle, you see your uncle, like he's making $20,000 a year. So how did you go about doing research? Um, did you get a real estate agent right away? How did that go about? Let's talk about that. He paid about 20K, but we'll say that he was making maybe 2400 a year from the rent after expenses and stuff like that. Right. So unless he's taking that money out, which he probably is, <laughs> um, he's making about twenty four hundred off the property with the value of the home growing. So what I did is uh, the first thing I did as a novice, I went on Redfin, um, got with somebody to go and look at a property, did not have a pre-approval, did not have anything. And it was a young it was a young man, probably the same age as me. <clears throat> he was in college. He was like 20 and. Every single question I asked him, hey, how much do you think I can get down on this property? Um, what do you think it's worth? Um, you know, when was the last time they updated anything? He would just tell me, uh, once you get your pre-approval, we can get our inspection and then we can get started on the process. So essentially everything I asked him, he had no information on. And yes, there's only some information that you can get without... Um, getting it appraised, getting it inspected, and getting that pre-approval so you can get in. But essentially, everything that he was doing was uh, just saying, hey, you got to put in this work first before I give you information. So essentially, he was just leaving it to me, and I didn't like that. Um, it seemed like a money grab. It seemed like he wasn't trying to give me knowledge and information. And so I stopped working with him. Um, I tried to work with another person on Redfin. The lady was more casual. We went and seen a house and the house was not uh, what it claims to be. In order to have a room in Ohio, you need to have at least one window, one closet. I believe the house did not have, I mean, one of the rooms did not have a window, but it did have a closet and they did count it as a room, which is not, um, acceptable um so it was really a two-bedroom um because it did not have that window um just didn't, didn't know and, that. yeah <laughs> it's a lot of information to get get in so even through my mistakes not having things ready i was still able to identify certain things and then the roof was just a lot of roofs in ohio when you go into the attic it can be very small cramped um, you know, very old for shorter for shorter people who lived back in those days. And so I looked at that as well as something that I wasn't really interested in. Uh, the woman agreed, but, you know, very like sluggishly, boringly, not really having anything to add. And so I feel like I was getting no information from my realtor who should have that experience. Uh, then I went with my uncle just to visit some nice apartments because I didn't really want to buy anything at the moment. It was like five months into living in Ohio. And we just ran across this realtor who was sh uh, showing off $500,000 properties on a, um, what's it called? One of those days where you just have everybody walk through, you yeah. know? Open and house. And we started talking. We was talking about the stock market. He was talking about how it was going up in value. And I was showing him my stocks on Acorns, Robinhood, and one finance. And he was just 
you know, just talking to me about that didn't really uh, hit me up to persuade me to buy a half a million dollar home, did not talk to me about, you know, real estate at all. And he was really just interested in my interests. And when I was ready to buy, when I was ready to start shopping for duplexes, about two months later, I just contacted him and he showed up that same day, not even knowing who I was, but just knowing that, you know, we obviously had some contact. And when I looked at that duplex, I didn't really like it. Uh, he understood. He gave his input. I liked the conversation and I continued to work with him. Down the road, I started looking at properties myself just to save time, uh, looking at the neighborhood myself so that I'm not, you know, bothering him with coming out and driving out to see properties that I'm not really interested in. And that saved us time as well. So instead of looking at five properties, I would look at three. Um, and then I would have my pre-approval ready. So I got with a lender, uh, one of these online lenders who can give you a pre-approval right away. And I would just email them, hey, give me a pre-approval on this house, give me a pre-approval on that house, give me a pre-approval on that house, because they know my information, they know how much money I have. And that's the good thing about the stock market. You can use up to 70% of your equity in the stock market because they don't expect that even in a Great Depression, your stock should only drop about 30%. So they'll use that 70% mark to gauge your wealth. Mm -hmm. So as I continue to add to my stock market portfolio every single year, I will always have more money to leverage in real estate, even though I'm never going to take out my stocks <laughs> for real estate, um, they see that I have the equity. And so they'll always give me um, what I'm looking for. And, you know, that's that's what I took from that. I had my pre-approval ready. I was going to look at properties on my own. And then I would call my realist, realtor so that we can walk through them. That's dope. I did not, I did not know that you, you know, having 70, they take, they basically calculate your network using 70 percent of your um valuation in the stock market which is that's pretty that's pretty dope mm -hmm. um so let's so that's dope that's actually dope i did not know that it was something new in here um so so how did you see so you spoke so you say you met your real, your real estate agent or your realtor so what what was like the big step like how do you decide on this house like what was the big what made the house a big difference compared to other right so people would think it's pressure but i think it's uh, knowing what you want. So there was a lot of deals that you'll miss in Ohio because the stock, the market is just crazy right now. And whether it's the stock market or real estate market is just freaking crazy. And everybody's buying up every property, especially in good neighborhoods. So the most expensive properties are going. I'm looking at a property in an upcoming neighborhood with a duplex, two bedroom is old and needs some work. But I knew it was going to be a bidding war. It was already 165K. And we walked through it. it. It was a little smaller. Obviously, it's a duplex. So, you know, you got two sides, which would have made it look so much bigger. One side was already rented out. And when you have a tenant in one, one of the units already, of course, you can ask for more money because you already got some cash flow. And so there was already like four offers on the home on the very first day and I came out the very first day and they wanted your best and final offer and I already knew. If I put an offer on this home, I can't put an offer on another home. My realtor is about to go on vacation so I can't really look at too many more properties. I don't wanna look with another realtor. And I did find this house that I'm living in right now. <laughs> um, this house that I'm living in right now, three bedrooms, one and a half bath. Everything is completely updated. The only thing I did not have is a washer and dryer, but it does have the hookup. New microwaves, fridge, stove, countertops, everything, bathroom. And I was just like, you know, this house is in an upcoming neighborhood as well. Not a B-class neighborhood like the duplex, duplex was in, but a C-class neighborhood that is slowly on the come up right next to a school, right next to a church. Literally across the street from me is the church and the school. So, you know, uh, during uh, COVID, you don't really know what the noise level is going to be, but right now it's, <laughs> it's amazing. So um, the property was originally listed at 155. Um, and during uh, the first seller, 
the seller first tried to sell it to someone who did not have the adequate financing and the price dropped to uh, 145 um, after 14 days. So they was really trying to get a quick sell on the home. And then when I looked at it at 145, everybody was telling me, just jump on it, just buy it. You want the home, it's updated, it's nice, it's clean. You want it at 145, don't take any risk. And I said, no, I want the best deal possible. And so I asked for $5,000 off right away. And if they wasn't going to agree to that, I was just going to walk away from the deal. And they did agree within 23 hours. We gave them two days to respond because we didn't want anybody else to put in offers on the home. Um, and they did agree. And with us being in contract, nobody else could walk through the home. So now we got the house at 140. Um, I'm looking to put a 10% down payment in. Uh, they're evaluating all of my stocks. They're looking at everything again. And obviously everything is good to go because I never touch my stocks. And then even, even if um, you want to put less money down, if you want to put 3% later, you can, especially on your first house. Mm -hmm. Showing that you have all of that type of money um, definitely helps you close the deal. So like literally I'll never have to use any of the money in the stock <laughs> market. <laughs> I could just put 5% down later on when most people will ask for 20%. Um, and so, yeah, I get the house for 140. We do our appraisals and, ex and inspections, which all cost money. I'm doing sewer inspections as well uh, because Ohio sometimes has bad sewers. Um, I checked, scoped it out. It was all good to go. Um, some people don't do that because you don't have to pay for that. But, you know, if you want a house and you want the best price, you got to do all that stuff. Um, we got extra work done on the foundation. We got extra stuff added to the house. We got the security system kept in the house. So like I was really looking for the best deal. I got $1,000 security equipment for free, um, extra $3,000 added to the house so that I could do some landscaping and stuff like that. And yeah, honestly, I was increasing the value of the house with the seller's money and just doing a lot of stuff. So I was able to put 10% down on the house, which was 14.5K. And the seller took the other 3K and the house got appraised for 142. So 142,000. So I got an extra $2,000 on top of what the seller was already doing for me. Uh, it was a great deal. <laughs> it's 